Approximately behind every lull, especially sleep, there is always a vital stage, the weakness or tiredness stage, which serves as a precedence that prepares the ground for such rest to yield adequate and constructive dream. This analogy is very applicable to human life. For one's life dream to become constructively productive, God will almost always send you this stage of weakness, when virtually everyone around you will seem to have become agents of nature, adding to your deal. What do you do when life deals you a punch? Do you dare it or do you choose to become a coward? Some people will retire to their village in tears, while a good constructive dreamer will challenge nature until he returns the punch. The late Nigerian billionaire Obon Thompson King said that what made him great is not that he was the best in the establishment he found himself, but that he was the most obsessed. You need to become so sad in order to become so glad in life. You need to see all these dream killers as the catapult robbers with you inside them as the stone. Let their dispersion of your dream serve as the force that will push the stone from the sling to unimaginable heights. See it as an opportunity, not a disadvantage. Joel Austin said that such dispellers are not happening to you, but for you. So the next time you see them, choose to thank them for what they've done for you instead. When life offers you a stake on which to grow, like yam or even pumpkin. Choose how to call yourself on the stake. Choose how to grow on it. Don't let his height, his shape or even his position determine how you grow. If he's too short, strive to navigate yourself to another stake. You won't break. You won't die. As I will always affirm, there is no elastic limit in the physics of life. Convince the stake he can't limit your growth. The lady that discouragingly told Steve Harvey that he can't be on TV constructively pushed him into going back to bed for his dream. And today, Steve is almost in every TV comedy shows. And he says, I buy plasma television for this woman every Christmas for what she has done for me. Take a lesson from every tiredness stage of your sleep to actualize a better life dream. See it as a gain, not a pain. Jomason once likened man to a rubber band, which is most useful only when stretched. Nature is not stronger than you. When he deals you a painful no blow, don't surrender. Don't give up. Engage him until you return the punch by constructing a gain from the pain of that no. I mean, turn that pain to purpose. Don't give up on the sound of no. Don't hate no's. They are constructively more advantageous than yeses. The Shauna Baba say that when one tells you no, you should appreciatively accept it because it's like adding fuel to a fire that is now set ablaze because of the single no. See it as a speller from your comfort zone to your dream zone. Finally, for one to succeed, one needs to be very angry with failure and very hungry for greatness. Get on that track now. Let's struggle to the top. Chris Hills loves you all. Thank you for your time.